Hey guys, um, Morphe here. Uh, so uh, I was kind of thinking I've been playing with this pass system by Red Hat, uh, which is called OpenShift, and I must say I'm pretty much impressed so far. I mean, they've pushed it um, to a level that uh, I mean has really kind of um, kind of given me the aha moment, you know. And I kind of thought uh, it'd be to be nice to kind of start a series on you know, OpenShift, uh, you know, kind of a uh, show people uh, my experiences and um, what I've learned, um, how to use some of the tools that Red has provided to interact with the uh, uh, PaaS system. So um, there will be a follow-up video uh, that tries to talk about PaaS in general, um, try to talk about OpenShift and what Red has, has in store for you know its product line in the PaaS niche. Uh, but for now, um, all you need to know is that Red Hat has um, three versions of OpenShift. Um, they have the OpenShift Online, OpenShift Origin and the OpenShift Enterprise. Now, both the Enterprise and the online um, edition of OpenShift are usually pretty much geared towards the the public cloud and, of course, corporate or enterprise environments. Uh, but the one we are going to be using throughout our series here is the OpenShift Origin. Um, this is the open source community um, kind of um, version where you can actually kind of get the source code, install it on your uh, test environment, your platform, or even do a kind of a massive um, installation if you like uh, for production environments. Um, so um, anyway, so without so much um, babbling, uh, let's just jump into what uh, we're supposed to do today. Uh, so today I'm just going to walk you through the OpenShift uh, console. Uh, this is a web interface where you can um, kind of interact with the OpenShift platform. Uh, so the web interface basically uh, talks to the um, broker, uh, the OpenShift broker, using um, some series of APIs. Uh, so you'll understand that um, you know Red Hat has created a client, um, Geo, um, a CLI client, uh, which is the RHC um, CLI tool. Uh, so I'll be showing that in another screencast. But uh, pretty much uh, interesting stuff Red Hat has going. All right, so I'm going to open up a browser here, and I'm going to navigate to my OpenShift installation, so I have it my local lab, right? All right, so uh, at the moment it's actually secured by a self-signed certificate. So of course, um, if you're doing this on a production environment, then you will want to kind of purchase a kind of a, an SSL certificate from a CA of your choice. All right, so I'm going to proceed and I'm going to log in using the OpenShift, OpenShift um, user that I have. Okay, so go to login. All right, so right now it's going in and um, kind of authenticating my credentials um, in the back end. And if you notice, uh, I'm using the the basic HTTP authentication here. So, but you know, of course, OpenShift allows you to use um, Kubernetes based implementations, LDAP, and all that. So, uh, for those of you that already have implementations of that, you can port it in and you know, kind of go on from there. All right. So, um, what you have here is the OpenShift Origin console. Um, here, you can see uh, pretty much uh, a welcome screen here. Um, at the moment, I don't have any application created yet. So, I mean, it's asking me if I want to create my first application. And of course, I can choose from a plethora of um, cartridges or web frameworks or you know, kind of different implementation out there. Um, of course, I can add embed or add other cartridges like uh, database cartridges. Um, and of course, I can use Git. So OpenShift Origin uses Git as its own um, source control management system. So uh, uses Git by default, so you know, feel free to you know play around with that. Um, now in the settings tab, here you're allowed to upload you know an SSH key, of course, so you can upload as many as you want. Um, you can create domains. Now your domains are limited to you know the kind of um, what your administrator has created for you. So for instance, if you are limited to five domains or ten domains, then of course you can only create as much as ten domains. Um, you know, attached to your profile anyway. Um, and then of course, authorization. So remember when I told you that um, the 
console uses the you know kind of the apis to communicate with the broker and back um, and vice versa uh, so you need a session uh, token actually a secret token so basically what happens is um anytime you try to authenticate uh using any of the cli tools here the rec tool then of course it's going to create a token which allow which makes it easier for you to communicate with the apis all right so um anyway for if you're using the enterprise edition i believe you have more options um than what you have here right now um anyway this is by design if you're using the online edition of course on this page you have the ability to upgrade your plans um so let's say you're using the um you know kind of like the bronze plan or you know you can use a free plan and of course you can use a silver plan and all that so anyway so um here on the help tab here you have different links to you know um the different help places you can get help uh, of course you can go to the getting started page you can go to some of the you know technologies page where you can see how it's been um implemented uh, if you want to troubleshoot you can go to the community forums here you can go to the knowledge base forum or you know use the faqs up there all right so uh, basically that's the console uh, pretty brief actually because uh, nothing so fancy actually going on here and of course in the account tab you just have basically just this right so um, nothing fancy all right so um, in the next screencast uh, we're going to look at um, creating our first application and um, hopefully you enjoyed this and if you have any questions or comments or suggestions please drop them in the um, comments uh, box below and of course we will discuss that in a moment all right thanks for watching